A site modifier regrades the site model. In the same way that a contractor needs to grade the landscape before installing a hardscape, the site model must be modified. Otherwise, the hardscape will either float above or be concealed by the site model. There are three different ways that you can create a site modifier. First, we're going to look at creating site modifiers by using the hardscape tool and also by using the create objects by shape command. So the hardscape tool is located over here in the site planning tool set. It's the one that looks like the bulldozer icon. So if we click on that, the, um, the type of modifier that we're going to work on in these videos is called a pad. It's the pad mode, which is the third mode in this first section here. Then in the third section over here, you have all of the different vertice modes for drawing. We're going to keep things simple today, so I'm going to leave that in corner vertex mode. And then over here, under the tool preferences, let's look at what some of those options are. So the simplification tolerance we will cover in another video, so we'll keep it simple right now. Just ignore that. And then for configuration, this is currently set to pad. So all of these options, they're the same options that you have over here in the mode bar. So we'll go ahead and leave that at pad. And then elevation is where that site modifier is going to sit in your model. I'm going to go ahead and leave that at zero for now. This is something that we can change in the object info palette. In fact, everything that you see here under the site modifier object properties dialog box, it can all be changed in the object info palette after the fact. So um, I'll go ahead and just leave that elevation at zero. For slope definition, we're going to cover that in another video, so I'll just set that to none. And then the apply to field down here at the bottom, you're going to want to leave that set to proposed. Your two options are either existing or proposed. And if you'll recall, when we first created our site model, we had to assign for both the 2D and the 3D whether or not that would be proposed or existing. For the majority of the time, you will set the modifiers to proposed. Now that the tool is set up, I want to demonstrate over here in the back corner what it looks like when we use site modifiers. And one habit that I would get into is be really clean about your active layer and your active class when you're using site modifiers. If you leave your site modifier on, let's say, the design layer where the site model lives, it can often be really hard to click and grab those. And so that's why I prefer using a second design layer for the site modifiers specifically. Over here, you can see that my active design layer is currently set to site modifiers. All right. So now that my active design layer is set, I'm going to come over here and in top plan view, because it's always easier to draw in top plan view, I am going to go ahead and add a couple modifiers back here in the corner and we will take a look at what those do. So I'll just do two different shapes, both angular, both simple. And then for this shape in the front, what I'm going to do is come over here and change the elevation. So if you remember, um, here along the top edge of my site model that the highest elevation is set to three feet. So let's go ahead and for this one, we're gonna set it to four feet. And then for this one, that's further back, I'm gonna go ahead and set that to two feet. And then let's take a look at this in 3D. And so you can actually see your modifiers before you update the site model. And that can be helpful to just to make sure that everything looks correct. So you can see that that modifier that is closer to the street is hovering above the site model, whereas the one that's further back in the property that that one's actually below the site model. Now you might be wondering what this candy cane striping that you see on your screen is. And what that means is that your site model needs to be updated. So to update the site model, and that's the only way that you're going to see the changes from your site modifier is to update the site model. Just grab your selection tool, click on the site model, and then over here in the object info palette, you have a button for update, as well as getting this candy cane striping hint here in the drawing area. Any time that this update button is red means that the site model needs to be updated. So we'll go ahead and click that. And this may be hard to see because um, the elevation changes are not that different. So let's actually come over here and really make those extreme. So for the elevation on this one, I'm going to do negative five feet. And then for the one closer to the road, 
I'm going to do 10 feet. So you can see that's really hovered above the site, hovering above the site model, and that this one is quite a bit lower. So let's go ahead and grab the selection tool, click on the site model, and click on update, and you can see how dramatically that changed the site model. That's quite a severe change. So that is just a quick example of what the pad site modifier does. I'm going to come in here really quick. I just added those in the back for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete them real quick. And one hint that I think you'll find useful is right now it's impossible to click on those site modifiers. So I can either come over here and just change my layer options to be active only, and that would make it pretty easy to select those. But I really don't have that many things in my file that I shouldn't be able to click on these easily. The only thing that I need to do is that currently my site model is the selected object in the file. If I just click or hit escape so that I don't have anything selected, then I should be able to come in here and click on those site modifiers pretty easily. It's just when the site model is actually selected that it's hard to click on anything else in the file. So I'll go ahead and I'll delete that. Notice that my candy cane striping came back. What that means is that I need to select the site model and then click update one more time. That's an example of how to use the pad site modifier using the hardscape tool to draw, but there is another method and this should be pretty familiar because we've used this command before. But I can always come over here and just draw any shape using any basic 2D geometry tool. And once I have that shape, I can come over here to the landmark menu and go create objects from shapes. Then I need to come up here to the object type field and select site modifier. And then I would like to go ahead and delete that original source shape because I won't be reusing it for anything else in the file. And I would like to see the properties dialog box. So click OK. And then this should look familiar because this was basically the tool preferences when we were using the hardscape tool. So simplification tolerance, I'm going to leave that at zero. I do want a pad configuration. For elevation, let's go ahead and make this 10 feet. So as I said, you can either change the elevation here in the dialog box before you actually create the site modifier, or this can be changed after the fact in the object info palette, which is the way we did it before. For slope definition, I'm going to leave that at none. In the applied to field, I'm going to leave that set as proposed. So I'll go ahead, I'll click OK. Let's take a look at it in 3D. And it's the same thing. So select the site model and then click update. And now you can see that the site model has been updated and it now goes up to that higher elevation, which is 10 feet. Let's go ahead and get rid of that site modifier and then go ahead and update the site model so that it's nice and flat.